Hi, friends. Uh, that was a Black Widow check. <laughs> Make sure there's no spiders underneath the table. Uh, we have the house sprayed here in Mexico uh, a couple of times a year at least, maybe three. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. And that costs uh, $50, $60. And they do all of the outside gardens and the patios uh, and then everything inside the house. And what that does is it tamps down the populations of scorpions, cockroaches, and spiders. Um, it's part of life in Mexico, living with those things. Uh, I don't find it bothersome or scary. Uh, it's just uh, part of the way things are. But you learn to look before you step with your bare feet in the house. And uh, you learn to uh, leave the top of the barbecue open so that the cockroaches don't think that it's a roach hotel. And you learn to look underneath the tablecloth <laughs> to make sure there's no black widow spider under there that's going to bite you. Lynn got bit by a black widow spider. Uh, she sat down in the kitchen patio chair. That's one of those tubular chairs, and the spider had a nest inside of the tube. Uh, anyway, it was out there on, on the handle of the chair, and it bit her on the thumb. It was a small one, um, but not one of the really bigger ones that we see around here. Anyway, um, very painful. Took her to the Ahi clinic, and the uh, doctor gave her an anti-venom shot, or whatever you call it, uh, and a prescription. So we got the shot, got back in the car, went to the drugstore. I went in and got the prescription. We came home. Now, this was our old Suzuki sidekick with the top off, so we're talking about a convertible. And our suspicion is that the uh, alacran, the, uh, what do you call it, scorpion, that had crawled up her pants leg and stung her as she swung to get out of the car, we are, our suspicion is that it dropped out of the tree into the convertible while we weren't in the car. And it was in the car and had crawled up her shoe in her sock and up underneath her pants leg and when it got restricted from her moving her leg it stung her well anyway <laughs> we're already in the car we're right back to the hospital again and the doctor happens to be out in the hallway when we walk in saying she got stung by a scorpion and he says it's the same shot you're not getting another one um that was uh, after we had lived here for seven years. We worried about uh, black widow spiders and scorpions for seven years, and uh, she got both of them out of the way in the same day. Turns out that the black widow spider bite on her thumb was uh, much more painful and long-lasting than the scorpion bite. The scorpions here, it's kind of like a, a bee sting if you're, if, if you're one of those people who whom a bee sting um, bothers a lot, but it's not life-threatening. Um, I'm not particularly bothered. I've been stung by a scorpion on the arm twice, sitting in my TV room watching TV, and uh, got up and got something out of the kitchen, came back, sat down, and put my arm on the stuff, overstuffed chair arm, and bing, bing, two of them, instant pain. Um, but again, it, I, I'm not, I'm not one of those people who has a severe reaction to it. It was a day and there wasn't much left of it, except maybe a little bit of an itch. Anyway, black widows, scorpions, and cockroaches. Oh, and then there's the bobos. Bobos are little midges. They're they kind of look like mosquitoes, but they're not, and they don't bite, and they're not dangerous, except that you get clouds of them um, this time of the year. And when the rainy season 
starts, we'll get them even more. If you're out riding a motorcycle or like my Quattromoto, you can breathe them in. That's not very pleasant. But they kind of hover over light-colored things a lot. So I actually painted the surround on my pool dark blue because I used to get clouds of bobos, we call them. They're tiny little natty things. And they only live for a day, so they'll come to the light. Oh, I painted the apron around my pool uh, dark blue. It used to be white, and I would get tornadoes of bobos around the pool surround. You'll get them in the windowsills in the morning. The windowsills could be like just covered with them because they only live for a day, and they come to the light of the window, and then they're there, and they die, and... I can probably show you some over here on the, hang on a second. You see on the screen door here, on the screen of the door, those are the bobos. So they've come there to the light at night and then they die. Well, what else is on my mind today? I've been having car troubles. I have a 1998 uh, BMW Z3 Roadster, and it's kind of fun to drive, and it's kind of fun to go to Walmart and have people, ooh, cool car, even though it's a really old car. <laughs> uh, and because it's an old car, uh, occasionally I have to fix something, and as I told you in a video recently, my, my favorite mechanic and friend, Pablo, uh, disappeared. Well, I found out uh, that he has moved back to the United States, so... Anyway, there's no more mechanic that I have uh, a good relationship with. Looking for another one. But in the meantime, it's me. So this is a piece of plastic piping that comes off of the back of the block. And if you've ever looked underneath the hood of a Z3, you know there's no room to spare. It's right up against the firewall. There's this much space from here to the firewall. And uh, hose clamps and bolts and taking some stuff to get just barely enough room to get my arm in there anyway. Took me two days to get that off. Went to AutoZone. Not available. It's in their computer, but not in stock. Went to Orma. Nope. Not available in Mexico. So I ordered it on, um, ordered it from a company in Connecticut, and I got it in five days, FedEx. A 24-year-old plastic part, extremely difficult to get to. Took me another day or so to get it back in there, and all is well with the BMW. Now let's talk about the van. When we came home, in March, um, started up the first time and had a check engine light on it. And I know how to do the code. You do the key on, off, on, off, on, off, on. And then it flashes, 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 and you count the flashes. Anyway, it's error code 27, which means that one of the injectors is not getting a signal. Well, I've been driving it that way because the BMW wasn't usable for a couple of weeks. And um, I finally took the doghouse off and found that, I don't know if it's a rat or a squirrel, but he chewed through the wires. Well, I jumpered it and it ran perfectly and the check engine light went off and I repaired the wire, put it back together and all is well with the van. So I now have two running vehicles again. Anyway... Um, that's, um, that's partly how I can afford to live how I live because I can fix stuff myself sometimes, most of the time, especially in RVing, you know, it's very expensive and sometimes takes a long time for a dealer to get around to fixing something in an RV and, um, I can pretty much fix anything. Uh, my mother always said it started when I got a train set, a very nice train set uh, for my 
for, for Christmas when I was six years old, and a few days later I had disassembled the engine. Much to the horror of my parents, <laughs> uh, who were quite happy when I also demonstrated that I could put it back together again. So anyway, I have some mechanical skills. One of the stories about that, um, and uh, with regard to the cost of living, um, and I think a lot of this channel is about the cost of living, because if you come to Mexico, one of the big reasons is that uh, you want a better cost of living. Uh, than where you're coming from. If you're coming from Thailand, you're probably <laughs> making a mistake with regard to the cost of living. But if you're coming from the U.S. or Canada or Europe, and there are a lot of uh, expats here who are from Europe and Canada, um, cost of living is uh, attractive by comparison. Anyway, cost of living. So I've always been a little... Uh, uh, aware of the cost of living. One of the stories that Lynn would tell you about me, uh, years ago, uh, we had an old dryer, and we had a big house. Uh, at the time, we were living beyond our means, as many Americans do. And uh, we lived in a 7,000-square-foot mini-mansion. It's a fantastic house. And we could afford it, but um, we could only afford it Again, because I can fix things myself. I had a plumbing problem or electrical problem or, you know, the roof needed repaired or the house needed painted. I could participate at least and help do these things and mitigate the cost of living in such a grand place. Anyway, we had this old dryer. We used to say that we, um, we furnished the place. When we moved into that house, 7,000 square foot, we moved from a 22 uh, or 2,400 square foot house and we didn't have enough furniture to fill it up. It was like the, 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 it w there would be an echo inside the house because it was empty. So we spent weeks, if not months, going to auctions and buying furniture and filling up the house with furniture. One of the videos I made years ago about uh, minima minimalism, I, I said I had an epiphany when I realized I was going to move out of the house. I had nine couches. Anyway... Go back and watch that video some other time. Um, we said that we furnished the house in period furniture. And the period was 1970s garage sale. <laughs> anyway, we had this old dryer and it, it, it kind of wore out. The bearing in the back of the dryer, the thing that holds the tumbler to the back of the dryer, it wore out, started making noise started grinding and I took it apart and the little BBs that are in the bearing fell out and anyway the story about me is that instead of going and buying her a new dryer I welded a big washer on the back and bolted it back together and for the rest of the time we lived in that house which was nine years um, that was the dryer <laughs> ah, what else is on my mind today? Well, um, uh, I, I mentioned that my son and I were looking to buy some property, some rural property in Arizona. We've canceled that project, and we've canceled that project because the, the county... It's just, I just, I tear my hair out. The plan was, and there's an old adobe house on this property that was built in 1905 and plumbed in the 1940s. Uh, four bedrooms, a kitchen, a huge living room with a huge stone fireplace. Two bathrooms. Uh, built long before... There even was a county. <laughs> anyway, the county now says, can't use the house. Um, too close to a riparian area. Um, the septic system, uh, put it in the 40s, which is still functional, by the way. Uh, you can't use it because it's in a, a, not a wetlands area. What do you call it? The FEMA 
count FEMA floodplain. Probably might, probably maybe but uh, might be able to use it, but you, you need a $2,700 hydraulic engineering study in order to apply for a, a floodplain use permit, which then only gives you permission to go to the rest of the county bureaucracy and get building permits, and nothing is grandfathered in if it hasn't been used for its primary and intended purposes for over 12 months. Well, it's been vacant for 20 years. So anyway, too many regulations. And then, oh, and the plan was, well, uh, my son, we'd buy him a fifth wheel to stay out there while he was working on the property. And I, of course, would take my 40-foot diesel pusher out there. And it would be okay because it's zoned homestead rural, which means that you can live in a motorhome legally. Uh, and it's 20 acres. But you can only have one motor home. <laughs> anyway, the straw that broke the camel's back was, it was 53 acres that was going to be divided into 20, 20, and 13. And the new survey put the property line right through one of the buildings, the one that we thought had historical significance. Uh, the property line goes through the middle of the building, putting both our plot and the one next door, 20 acres here, 20 acres there, both of them in violation of the county setbacks. Anyway, too many government regulations. Speaking of government regulations, uh, saw this on the news. When I say I saw something on the news, I either read the Guadalajara Reporter, which is an English language newspaper here at Lakeside in Ajijic, Mexico, or I uh, watch YouTube videos. And you have to be careful about YouTube videos because those are opinions. And, well... Whatever I say here is also my opinion. It's not a fact. Uh, the thing that caught my attention was in California, um, there was a lawsuit. And a lawsuit uh, was about protecting bumblebees. Seems there are four different kinds of bumblebees in California. And... Uh, some of them or all of them are endangered as bees are around the world. And there are environmental protection um, uh, protections for different things. And the California law, or maybe it's the federal law, I don't know. But anyway, it's written as uh, protecting fish and it's been litigated in California and in California law. Um, with regard to protecting certain fish and um, certain uh, uh, bird habitats. And in Oregon, it was spotted owls. And anyway, uh, bees, bumblebees, need to be protected. So they had this lawsuit. And a judge decided that in order to protect the bees, they would just redefine the law. The bottom line is that the court in California has now decided that bumblebees are fish. You heard me right. I didn't make this up. In California, bumblebees are now legally fish. <laughs> and that's why I didn't buy property in Arizona, because I do not trust the government not to make life difficult. <sighs> well, thanks for listening to me today. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.